I would have never believed it, but Rambo is back. So I decided in honor of his latest and supposedly last Rambo movie, we would take a look at <laughs> the uh, budget version of the original Rambo knife. I'm talking about this $8 survival knife from Harbor Freight. We're going to put this through the standard survival on purpose testing process here at our cutting edge knife testing facility at Survival on Purpose Worldwide Headquarters, including the balance testing, and just see how well this thing holds up. It should be a lot of fun. That's what's coming up next here on Survival on Purpose. Welcome back to Survival on Purpose, your home for information and gear reviews related to camping, survival, and general preparedness for regular folks. My name's Brian. Thanks for joining me. So, as I said, um, and I haven't seen it yet, by the way, but I really want to see the latest and supposedly last Rambo. Um, I remember seeing the first one. I actually read David Morrell's book, First Blood, I think before the movie came out. Um, and I'm actually in the process right now of listening to it again on Audible. Anyway, I bought this knife a long time ago when we were doing the gauntlet and I was trying to persuade everybody to, to take this one knife and see how far it would make it through the gauntlet. Nobody had any confidence in it. They were afraid it wouldn't make it through the first video, I think. So anyway, it's been just sitting around in a box in my garage for several years now. I thought, hey, why not? Rambo's out again. Um, kind of in, 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 in celebration of that, I thought, you know, let's just take this thing and we'll, we'll put it through the standard testing I always do. We're going to do a little chopping with it. We'll do some batoning with it. We'll do some striking, you know, fire building stuff with it. Maybe a little carving. And we'll certainly, if it makes it that far, we'll check the balance. So, um, I'm curious. What do you think? You think this thing's going to make it all the way through the testing? We'll find out uh, coming up right after this word from one of our sponsors. This video is sponsored by my friends at Sportsman's Guide, where I've been a buyer's club member for several years now. Uh, so what I thought I'd do is just tell you four benefits to being a Buyer's Club member at Sportsman's Guide. First of all, Buyer's Club members get a 5% discount on guns and ammo. 5% is a pretty big deal when you're talking about a gun. And 10% discount on most other products. Second of all, Buyer's Club members get access to special members-only discounts called Bullseye Deals, which are even greater savings. Third, Buyer's Club members get access to four pay installment plan, which allows you to pay for purchases over 150 bucks and four equal installments at zero interest. Finally, and this is very recent and it is a huge deal, Buyers Club members get free shipping on orders over 49 bucks, including ammo. So I really appreciate Sportsman's Guide being a channel sponsor and I really encourage you to go check them out. I think you'll be glad you did. Okay, we're back. So um, without any more rambling, I'm gonna take you down to the old stump top and get to doing some of that Rambo knife stuff. Okay, I gotta tell you, I've been wanting to make this video for a long, long time. I really am looking forward to doing this. I really think it's going to be fun. First, let's see if we can even get this thing out of the package. So this is a survival, 8-inch survival slash hunting knife. And it comes in this really cool, really tactical camouflage looking cardboard package. I'll show you right at the bottom right there. It says made in China. It comes apparently with a little survival kit in there and a compass. Pretty cool there. And a, um, it says caution, handle with care, sharp knife. Right there, see that? So we got to be careful. Okay, we'll take that little sticker off there because that's not tactical at all. Let's just get to it. So um, <laughs> now I recognize that the knife that Rambo used was a, a really expensive knife. This is not so much. This one was $7.99. I saw it today at Harbor Freight. Even though this was several years old, I probably paid seven bucks for this one. So there it is. It's got this blade here. Let's just, uh, uh, we'll do this little carving with it. And then it's got a uh, kind of a saw back on it. It's, it's, it's got a, uh, you know, they're, they're serrated. They're, they kind of alternate, so staggered. A little bit of a, a buoy point, clip point. Um, the, the, I have to say the grind on the tip is not really very sharp. It's a little sharper down here. It's a, uh, of course, uh, it's a hollow grind. And then it looks like the blade, as you can see, is bolted in right here with a, and, and it's like an Allen wrench, an Allen bolt. So there's that. And it's got this lanyard here. And then we screw the cap off. It's got a little rubber O-ring here, which is cool. And then inside the cap, like I saw this on First Blood, I just watched First Blood again the other night to kind of get, get the bearings back. It's got a compass. 
and I saw Rambo checking that out a lot on first blood even in the cave so um, we're gonna take a look at this compass though and see if it maybe points to north so get the metal out of the way so it's pointing the north this way and I gotta say I've got my uh, Sunto compass which I know is, is, is been accurate every time I checked it and it's it's in line so I think the compass appears to be pretty accurate um, and it's just kind of like a floating compass so as far as I can tell the compass is working wait it just turned around it just turned to face that way now so north is this way right this way is north we'll put the uh, yeah let's see okay yeah, north is like the, this way and oh it just moved again okay it finally moved back so it took it a second so there's that Oh, we don't want to cut ourselves. Let's see. Get this survival kit out of here. So, we got in the survival kit. We're going to check the whole thing out, man. Because I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if the knife's going to make it past the first test. <laughs> so, so, we're going to see. <laughs> I at least want to, I want to have a little content for the video here. So, let's see what we got here. We've got some really... Che cheesy looking matches that thing is like paper thin um some of them are a little bigger than that there's the quality control on these matches is probably let's take a look at these quality control on these matches leaves a little to be desired but we got we got i'm sorry we got three matches one of them the head just broke off i mean it just crumbled off fell off when i pulled them out um the other ones seem to be holding on okay and we got a striker here and we've got a sewing kit and some buttons because that seems like a very critical survival item. It's also got a little a little um, safety pin in there and a single needle. And you try to thread that one while your hands are cold and shaky. And then we have, a, oh, we got another match. So there was actually six matches in there. And we have a, uh, a little spool, a little wad, I guess, of monofilament fishing line with a small fish hook on it. So... That could be could be functional. So we're gonna try these matches out. We're just gonna try one of them out, see how it works. We'll try the uh, super thin one. And see, up oh, it broke. All right, let's see if I can get it left. Try the other one. Can you see that? Okay, here we go. Let's see. And it worked. So, so then we could use it to light the super thin one. There we go. So the matches worked. That one did anyway. So okay, so there's that. Trying to see inside there to see what the uh, tang looks like. If you can see inside there, you see that. So the, the tang is just, it looks like it comes down just to about right here and it's bolted in. So anyway, there's that. And then just so we have a detailed review, we have a very, very nice padded sheath, a little plastic insert here and a, uh, a plastic snap retainer on the strap. So there's that so so let's set the survival stuff aside for a minute put the compass back in and we'll do get to doing some knife stuff with it okay it's got what looks like a pretty good sized chunk of maybe even fat wood here we're gonna do a little carving with it now let's see how well it carves you think it would carve pretty good because this is pretty simple stuff here It's, um, hmm. That way it's usually pretty easy to carve. Try this knife. This is just a little bench made. Okay, so the bench made works fine. Let's try it on some cedar. Maybe the cedar's a little softer. Been cur carved from curls. Man, it is not carving for anything. Okay, I got to be honest with you. I thought at least, at least, it would, it would, it would carve a little bit. Carve some, I could carve some feathers with it. I mean, I'm generally pretty decent at carving feathers, and we got a few there, but not, not really a lot. Let's try the inside of the cedar. Maybe it's just the outside's harder. Okay, I'm really having to put a lot of pressure on this thing just to get these little curls out of here. I mean, it's doing it, but not doing it great. So there's that. Okay, we're going to call that 
On a scale of one to 10 for carvability, I'm giving this thing about a two. I don't know that that hollow grind's just, it's not very good. I've tried it, I tried, maybe up here's a little better, but I can't really get any leverage way up there with it. See that, so. So anyway, we'll call that one best it's gonna get. So let's try a little bit of chopping and we're gonna do some light chopping. I'm not gonna do any heavy chopping with it. I'm just gonna try to chop this little piece of cedar in two. Now this is a very thin piece of wood, so let's just see what happens. I know this is not an axe, but this blade is getting loose in here for sure. Okay. Now, I said I was going to do the regular test on this thing, but I, I'm kind of babying it. I usually would chop something bigger than that, but can you see this? Can you see it moving? It's already moving. It's already loose. Um, I'm going to try some batoning now. I really, like again, I'm trying to kind of baby it because I really want, to, want it to make it to the balance testing. <laughs> so, I'll be right back. Okay, so, got myself an Allen wrench. Tighten that sucker up, and it was pretty loose. So maybe I should have done that before I started the testing, but um, let's try something here. <laughs> so really and truly, it'll almost fit in there. Well, it's not gonna fit. So if you got yourself a little bit shorter Allen wrench, you can just keep it in there. So you could, you could you know, do blade maintenance with it. <laughs> okay, so anyway, there's that. We haven't tried the saw out. Let's try the saw and see how well the saw works. We'll try it again on the cedar. Cedar's pretty soft stuff, so let's see, you know, this is probably more for making notches than it is for actually sawing. <laughs> let's see, so got a little notch there. It's kind of tough to hold though. Let's try a little bit bigger piece of wood. This is the one we're going to baton in a minute anyway, so. So if you need to make a little notch, and you have a lot of time, you could probably do it. Okay, well there's that. I'm going to lose my Allen wrench. Let's, um, this is some really hard wood. I chopped on this before. Let's see what happens when I chop on some hard wood with it. Messing up my scrapings over here, but I'm gonna pile them back up there. Let's see. Okay. It didn't get loose that time, so maybe it was loose to begin with. So let's do a little, uh, the tining of this very, very solid wood here. It's not big, but let's just see what it'll do. It's a big, big honking knife, but I don't really have anything big honking to baton. So, we'll just do this short piece here. See what happens. Let me get up here where you can see it. I'm kind of at an angle. doing this to try to get something that might carve a little better than what I had. So there's a something. Now if, if, if this doesn't carve, then this thing is not a carver. So I'm trying to give this thing the benefit of the doubt. It just it just kind of wants to ride over it. I don't know if that angle is I think that secondary bevel is just too steep there. Or too shallow, whichever way you call it. I think the angle's too too high grind. Okay, well, got a little bit of a feather there. 
Let's see if this thing will strike a ferro rod. Scrape this all together here. We got a little fat wood there, um, but mostly we got dry, really dry wood here. Got a nice six inch ferro rod from Five Star Gear. And it does have a sharp spine here, pretty sharp spine, so that's a plus. Let's see what we can do. Let's see if we can get us a fire going. Let's try a little, a little more of this old fat wood here. And I'm doing really good on scraping the fat wood. It's scraping it better than it carved it, I'll tell you that. <laughs> okay, I'm pretty sure we can get us a fire going now. There we go, I knew we could. Fat wood never fails me. Okay, well, not too bad at that. What's next? Okay, honestly, I have to say, so far, I'm a little surprised this thing is performing as well as it has. Not that it's performing excellently, excellently. Not that this would be anywhere close to my top 100 choices of a knife because it's not a uh, full tang, but it chopped reasonably well small stuff. It, uh, it really struck a ferro rod really well. The saw, not, not your saw, works okay. I think a little, bit, a little bit of work on the edge, it would carve better. And I'm just really surprised. I'm honestly impressed that it hasn't fallen apart um, from batoning on it. I didn't try to baton anything really big because I didn't have anything that was big enough that wasn't rotted. But as you know, here at Survival on Purpose Worldwide Headquarters, we maintain a state-of-the-art cutting-edge knife testing facility. And despite all that real, you know, I guess practical use testing, I always like to do some scientific testing on every blade we review here. So I've been really looking forward to and hoping this one made it through the uh, other part so we could get to the uh, balance orientation and rotation device where i really like to test the balances the balances the balance of these knives i removed the uh, non-paracord lanyard here because that kind of interferes with the balance testing so anyway without further ado let's see how well this thing actually works by the way you're going to notice that um my new improved balance orientation and rotation device has had some issues, so I'm, I've kind of gone back to the refurbished old one for temporary. Maybe a future video will cover that. But right now, let's see how well this 8-inch uh, survival and hunting knife does on the old balance orientation and rotation device. Okay, we missed, and it whacked pretty badly. The blade is kind of loose, so I've got my old... Uh, knife maintenance tool here and <laughs> we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll see if we can snug it back up maybe some loctite it's snug so we'll try again it did stick i think we need to back up just a little bit calibration is so critical a little better try again it's getting a little loose again Yeah, Kappa's handle kind of interferes with the aerodynamics. That one stuck pretty good. Okay, we're going to give it one more. I want to make sure I'm out of the way of the camera. We're going to call it balanced. So, what do you think? I got to say. Are you surprised as I am that this thing actually made it through um, a reasonably standard knife testing procedure here at Survival on Purpose? I did have to tighten it up a couple of times and it's it got a little play in it now. Let's see if it's got any more slack in it. Maybe some Loctite on the screw would help. It's pretty tight though. I gotta say, again, this would not be my recommended knife for anybody to trust their life to, but I'm surprised. I'm just, I'll just be honest with you, I'm surprised for eight bucks. I figured this thing would, would fall apart. I have no doubt I could break it if I tried to with some serious, maybe trying to baton through some really big gigantic piece of wood or something or chopping a tree down with it. But it's, um, it's got that much, that much of a tang bolted in here. And honestly, I thought the balance test would kill it because especially with the, the pre-calibration strike or two there that banged it pretty hard, I was expecting to break the blade off, but it didn't. So... 
you know, I gotta say, um, I'm surprised. And <laughs> this, is, this has been fun anyway. Take it for what it's worth. I hope this has been interesting to you. Um, <laughs> as always, thanks for watching Survival on Purpose. I put out a new video every Friday and Saturday and sometimes random videos throughout the week. If you haven't subscribed, you can fix that by clicking right down there. Be sure and click that little notification bell thingy that pops up. So hopefully YouTube will notify you whenever I put out a new video. If you want to make sure you don't miss a single one, I invite you to subscribe to my weekly email newsletter where every Sunday I'll send you an email with all the previous week's videos plus any cool offers, deals, or news I think you might be interested in. You can just go to survivalonpurpose.com forward slash subscribe or click that little square down there with a knife in it and that will take you right there too. I really appreciate the support. Once again, my name is Brian. You're watching Survival on Purpose. Remember, survival is not an accident, so be prepared. I don't know if Rambo would approve of this one or not, but...